So I love this title too. We have such clever speakers with their titles. So Jody Berman is going to come and speak to you on Keep Your Cool, Dietary Strategies to Fight Inflammation. And Jody works at El Camino Hospital as one of our uh, certified diabetes educators. She went to school at um, Cal Poly um, in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, okay. And got her Bachelor's of Science in Dietetics and Food Administration. And then she worked at Mercy Hospital in San Diego um, and did her diabetic internship. And she is a certified diabetes educator um, since 2001. So she has a lot of experience. I know many of you already have gone to the Ask the Nutritionist table and um, got firsthand knowledge from some of the uh, tools that Jody brought. So with that, Jody. Hey. Hi everyone, I know we're all getting hungry, me included. <laughs> so hopefully I'll keep my brain cells in order as we go along here. Um, every month I get in my mailbox um, one of my favorite nutrition um, publications. It's called Environmental Nutrition. Some of you may be aware of this one. Anyway, it comes out of a, a city in Texas, and on its editorial board is a long list of very professional, prominent registered dietitians. And I find when I get this uh, newsletter, I end up reading it from cover to cover because it's just really interesting, and, I, and even as a dietitian, I'm learning things from it. Well, in last month's issue, there was a... Um, there was an article on food and inflammation, and I thought, you know, this would be something I'd like to pass along to the group here at the Women's Forum. And um, that, along with some research on my own, I put this talk together today. So my objective is that you would leave here today with a better understanding of the actual connection between food and inflammation. Also, that you would be able to list a few specific types of food that are involved in this, whether to the good or to the bad, so that you could go from here and with some practical ideas in your head about how to implement the guidelines in your own dietary habits and in your own meal planning. So when you think of the term inflammation, um, it comes from the, the Greek word inflammo, which means I set a light or I ignite. We think of this fire. Um, there are two types of inflammation. There is a acute inflammation and chronic. The acute type is when you cut your finger or when you develop an infection or when you have an allergic reaction to something where you, where you feel heat. The classic signs of an acute inflammation um, are heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. So our immune system goes to battle against this invading foe and um, fights that battle. And when the battle is over, everything calms down and we're fine. Okay, now the, the chronic inflammation is different from that, where it's a low level or low grade kind of inflammation. We call it systemic inflammation that where the immune system is triggered somehow to keep producing these inflammatory chemicals that never really go away. Um, we can measure inflammation um, with uh, one blood test called C-reactive protein. And when someone has um, one of these acute infections, you'll see levels of maybe 40 up to 200 or even higher on that test. Well, this low-grade inflammation we're talking about is more like a, a result three, between three and that that level of, of 40. So very, it's very low. We don't feel it, but it's going on and we know that it's uh, becoming seen as a common denominator for many of our chronic diseases. Also, the same kind of low level type of inflammation is what is connected with a lot of the things, the functional declines that we see with aging. You know, skin, some of the changes in the bone, um, cataracts, these all involve a type of inflammation. Here is a, a broad uh, chart here of just how this inflammation touches many different conditions. And one of the most um, interesting research discoveries that I've run across is about obesity lately. You may have seen it in the news about how we now know that the, um, the fat cell, which we typically think of as just being a storage depot for excess energy, you know, it just sits there until we need it. It actually is a very alive, 
type of cell that churns out inflammatory chemicals called cytokines. And this is interactive with our body and is causing problems. It can be, you know, this is why if you're heavier, there's more risk of heart disease. Um, and the good news is that if we accomplish some weight loss in that scenario, even five to 10% of your present weight, we see these inflammatory markers declining. So that, that's the good news. Lifestyle habits, what you choose to do from day in and day out can make a huge impact on your health. You know that. You, if you're a smoker, there's issues. How you sleep at night, your stress control, whether or not you exercise and how you choose to eat. We have a huge impact on our future ability to stay strong and healthy. Um, we have certain uh, end products that come naturally from metabolism, okay? Round the clock, natural cell metabolism produces some unstable chemicals. You may have heard of them as free radicals, but these are a couple of types of inflammatory chemicals that are produced, and it's natural that we have these in our body. Advanced glycation end products, I'm just gonna call them from here on out AGEs, um, and reactive oxygen species. Um, what what these do is they're such reactive molecules that they can um, modify larger molecules around them that, are, that we depend on for life processes. And so normal processes of physiology uh, can be damaged. Now the AGEs are um, produced when a protein is bound to a glucose molecule. And the result is some cross-linking of the proteins. Um, that's a damaged protein when they're cross-linking. And as the body tries to free these AGEs apart, immune cells then secrete large amounts of inflammatory cytokines. Maybe you've heard that term. That's in one of these inflammatory chemicals. Okay, and these things um, accumulate with age but it's worsened by chronic disease. So when you go to your doctor and you are given therapies to improve your med medical condition, um, there, that's, being, um, that's helping you to reduce some of this inflammation. Um, and, but your, as you age, it, it adds to it. Okay, now the good news again is that it's, it's all about balance of, your, of, of the antioxidant systems in your body. We have a huge ability to heal our bodies naturally. Some of you came up to me at the table in the outside and said, you know, I really would like to hear more about how that can happen. And so this is, this is really what I want to be telling you about today. Um, we have a certain sense of personal responsibility that we need to take in order to tilt the balance in our, more of in a positive way towards our favor, okay? Um, we can go and have medications to help improve conditions, but yet there's a lot that we can do before we even, you know, have to take those medications to prevent some of these things from getting out of control. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the foods that fuel inflammation. Now when I'm talking about these, just keep in mind that I'm not saying you should never have any of these ever, ever in your diet or in your scenario. Okay, but again, you wanna be decreasing these and increasing the foods that we'll talk about next uh, so that you keep a good balance. So the first one is foods that are cooked at high temperatures. And here's just some examples. These are fried and charred foods, pictures that I ran across. How many of you had chicken on your grill that looked like that? <laughs> it's easy to do. Okay, this was the funniest picture I found. This is actually what they called fried soda. <laughs> okay, probably a, a, a Coca-Cola or some other soda-based batter that was then just drizzled into hot fat, and there you go, the health fair. Or not the health fair, the, the not at the health fair. <laughs> Other fairs uh, might serve that. Okay, now, um, when you see food brown, that's what we call the Maillard reaction in cooking. Some of you may be chefs out there. 
And this is different from the browning that you get when you cut into a banana and see it turn. Okay, this is like when you brown your hot rolls in the oven. Okay, this is the, the Maillard reaction. And um, that um, is creating these AGEs to a certain extent. Um, but usually when you have something that goes into um, um, hot fat where the temperatures are up above, say, um, 350 to 400 degrees, that's usually where hot oil is boiling. Um, this is where you have these AGEs forming in greater amounts. So cooking at higher temperatures for shorter periods of time, like broiling a chicken breast, creates more AGEs than cooking at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. For example, I read that broiling a chicken breast for 15 minutes, it's gonna be pretty dark by then, <laughs> contains five times as much AGEs as boiling the chicken for an entire hour. So think about maybe you should do a little more uh, poaching, stewing, maybe boiling some things instead of broiling, frying, or grilling everything. You know, we've been taught that we should do those all the time because that's the lower fat cooking method. But I'm just suggesting to you that maybe mix it up a little bit. Don't just always broil things. Okay, another one. Refined sugars and grains. Here are some examples. Um, according to Harvard Medical School, a study in 2010 found that following a meal or snack of highly refined carbohydrates, um, creating an elevation in blood sugar, um, there was an increased level of these inflammatory cytokines that uh, resulted. But unfortunately, maybe you would agree with me that this is the area of our diets that we most often want to ignore. <laughs> because we like sugar, right? It makes us feel good, it raises serotonin levels and comforting and all of that. Um, so yes, that's true. We can always leave out those little sugar cookies down there at the bottom. But what we might not realize is that there's a lot of sugar that's crept into our food system, right? In our processed foods. Um, so read your food label. Um, the amount of sugar that's in our food chain in the American supermarkets is actually taking a toll on our health. And this is the connection because it, it promotes some of this, these inflammatory chemicals. It, some of you may have seen this article or this version of uh, National Geographic. They did a big uh, spread on sugar in America. And I would, this is August 2013, really interesting about how we have had so much sugar in our, in our food chain here. Okay, another thing, excess omega-6 fats. Um, this is a type of polyunsaturated fat, just like the omega-3. And what defines whether you have a fat that's a six or a three is where the double bond is on the carbon chain in the molecule, where the last double bond is in the molecule. So as you see from this chart here, omega-6 is predominant in um, refined vegetable oil. Okay, now they're not necessarily bad. It's more the balance that we're looking for. Um, Several sources of information suggest that our most ancient dietary patterns actually had a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 of about one to one. In other words, they were equal. We, we ate more fish, we ate more uh, natural plant-based omega-3. But in the modern Western diet, the ratio is more like 15 or 16 to one. And that's the dietary pattern that's been associated with um, cytokines and the inflammation. So check out the things on the bottom. What do you see? Walnut, black seed, fish. Okay. Um, finally, um, a food that fuels inflammation is these partially hydrogenated fats. Um, when you look at a nutrition label, and many of them now have figured out how to make uh, the label say zero when you look at trans fats, um, what you have to realize is that if you see it in the ingredient list, but that just means that for the serving size listed on that product, that it contains less than half of a gram, not necessarily zero, but less than half of a, a gram of hydrogenated trans fat. And um, this is also adding to the risk of inflammation we find. So here's some of the wonderful popular things that we sometimes crave or use um, that would contain these hydrogenated fats that are solid at room temperature. 
So read your label. Okay, flip side. Foods that fight inflammation. Slow digesting carbohydrates. No surprise there. Emphasize the whole foods. Um, greater dietary fiber was associated in a study of 600 adolescents um, with lower levels of C-reactive uh, protein. And the link between the two seemed to be the improvement in insulin sensitivity that came along with a pattern of more whole, slow digesting carbohydrates. Make an effort, a, a focused effort, to put omega-3 in your diet every single day. Um, use fish twice a week. In particular, uh, salmon, um, sardines have a lot of omega-3 in it. Um, and then complement that with, with buying some walnuts. Grind them up, chop them up, put them into your, put them into your oatmeal, on top of your other foods. Um, get some ground flax seeds. Some people are making uh, smoothies now with chia and kale. Kale, even though it's a vegetable, has omega-3 in it. Um, if you do eat uh, beef or eggs, the ones that have the more omega-3 are the grass-fed versions on the beef and the range-free chicken eggs. <laughs> range-free chicken eggs. If you feel like you absolutely can't tolerate or whatever these foods, then you should um, consider using omega-3 supplements and you can discuss that with your doctor if you feel a need for a large, larger amount of omega-3 supplements. But the goal per day is about a thousand milligrams of omega, a thousand of I use of omega-3. Okay. Antioxidant foods. Um, there's some herbs and spices. Look at all the colors here. These foods um, and herbs and spices, they actually, if you have a lot of them in their, your diet, it forms like this synergy. They work together. They complement each other. So you need to have a wide variety of colors to get the benefits. The diversity is what we want. And it's not just the food, the, like the vitamin A or the vitamin C that's in the food um, or just the fiber, but it's how as it's a, a being um, broken down in your gut, used by the tissues, that's forming protective uh, metabolites. And so they're good for everything they contain and everything that results from, from eating them. Go for the colors. As for the herbs and spices, um, a 2012 lab study that I ran across found that rosemary, sage, and thyme actually retain significant anti-inflammatory effect even after heating and digestion. Okay? And other well-known spices um, for the anti-inflammatory compounds are cayenne pepper, cinnamon, clove, ginger, nutmeg, oregano, and turmeric. So there's a lot of things out there. So spice up, herb up your foods, and enjoy the flavors of that. Finally, uh, the food I want to talk about, probiotics. Okay, we've got our yogurt. Um, when you have yogurts with live and active culture, it's maximizing, di optimizing digestion, supporting the immune function, function as it crowds out bad bacteria from the gut. And um, because if your intestinal cells are having trouble absorbing nutrients, you're at risk for inflammation. So I try to have yogurt with live cultures every day one or two servings of that. Um, of course, best are yogurts that are lower in sugar. Um, and check the, the date, the best by date, because levels of bacteria, uh, the bacterial count re, uh, decline as the thing gets older. Here's an, an, another source of, of probiotics. This is a naturally fermented food known in the Korean culture as kimchi. Okay. Um, other naturally fermented products would be soybean products like uh, tempeh, miso, or natto. Okay, it's all good. Um, then, of course, there are the supplements. And there may be lots of questions in your mind about probiotic supplements. They're not all the same. Um, there's different strains. The different strains do different things. Um, but if you want a real some real good information about how to interpret um, supplements, you might take a look at consumerlab.com. Uh, one of the most important things to consider is, is that probiotic supplement 
um, surviving the trip through the GI tract and getting into the lower part of the intestine where you want it to work. So tips for keeping your cool, straight out of an environmental nutrition newsletter. Instead of grilled steak, poach salmon. Instead of fried potato chips, walnuts. Instead of cookies, go grab your strawberries and your blackberries. Instead of white rice, go whole grain. Instead of margarine on everything for flavor, use spices and herbs. And finally, instead of ice cream, cultured yogurt and fruit. And so thank you very much. That's what I wanted to let you know about. Um, I, <laughs> if, you, if you come and visit me back at the expert table or maybe even outside, um, I came across a couple of recipes that I thought were good illustrations. I've got um, steel cut oats risotto, a new way to use your steel cut, cut oats to side dish at dinner. And then I have an orange peach smoothie, which actually blenderizes in some broccoli and frozen peas and red pepper that's roasted and into a smoothie. I thought it was really interesting. So I will have those out back for you if you'd like it.